children's sermon today, you are invited to remain in your seats. How many of you have ever heard the expression, what goes around comes around? Oh, good. Well, normally when we say what goes around comes around, what we mean is if you do good to someone, good things will happen to you. But if you do bad to someone, then bad things will happen to you. Well, for us today, and especially as we're going to hear in today's gospel reading in just a few minutes, it has an entirely different meaning. What Jesus reminds us is to do good things for other people. But the reason we do good things for other people is not so we can get good things in return. That would actually be kind of a selfish reason. Instead, the reason Jesus wants us to do good things for other people is because he has done many good things for us. He died on the cross to save us. He heals us. He gives us everything we need, and he helps us in many different ways every day. And so what Jesus wants is for us to pass along all the good things he has given us to other people. When we do so, we actually honor Jesus. So in that way, what goes around comes around for Jesus because he gives things to us we give them to other people, and then he gets honored and praised. When we do, when we do good things for other people, we are, on, we are honoring Jesus because we are thanking him for everything he has done for us and praising him by saying, I am so happy and thankful for how much you love me, so I'm going to show how thankful I am by loving other people just like you love me. What goes around, comes around for Jesus. Everybody, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, please help me to thank you by loving other people. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he was with them, so I will look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land. I will pass through them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel with grazing land. There, with, there they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapters 15 verses 20 through 28. But Christ has intended, has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep since death came through a, through a man and resurrection of all the dead comes also through a man. For as in a Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But in each of his own turn, Christ the firstfruits, and then when he comes, those who will belong to him. And then the end will come, and he hands over the kingdom of God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must, re he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, the Son himself will be made subject to him, who puts 
everything under him so that God may be in all. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick and in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the many great blessings I have had since coming here has been able to help, to help out at camp regularly. And I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you 
for all the ways you have helped camp this year. Whether volunteering your time and energy to help distribute food, contributing food or monetary donations, or helping to buy food, each and every one of you has been of tremendous help and support to camp this year. And so we thank each and every one of you for your support and for your continuing support. Helping out at camp has certainly been a rewarding experience in many different ways. Yet, I do not look on it as being a privileged member of the community or as privileged members of the communities helping the needy in our community. Instead, I look on, I look on helping at camp as being equals helping equals. We are all equal members of the same community and so we help each other out in time of need. We are all equals who live in the same place, and so as a result, we help each other out whenever there is any kind of trouble. After all, we ourselves might, even tomorrow, end up in the position where we ourselves need extra help. And so it is a comfort to know and to experience that if and when that happens, we are able to rely on our neighbors for help, just as we are able to help our neighbors. We are all interdependent and interconnected in this community. And not just, as we are reminded through camp, only in Farmersville alone, but also the whole Valley View and New Lebanon communities, and ultimately the entire area and the entire world. We are also especially reminded of this in today's gospel reading. Now one thing I want to emphasize first and foremost is that today's gospel reading is not meant, <clears throat> is not meant to be a clobber passage of some sort. The term clobber passage is used for passages which have traditionally been used to condemn or to scold member individuals or members of certain groups frequently used to advance a certain sort of agenda. This is what we say when we, when we say clobber passages. Today's gospel reading, however, is not one of those. In fact, no passage of the Bible is meant to clobber another person or group of people. No passage of the Bible is meant to condemn another person or group of people. Today's, today's gospel reading has been used to condemn people viewed as being rich, but that is not the case at all, and I want to make that perfectly clear. Again, no passage is meant to clobber another person or group of people. One's economic status or wealth does not in any way contribute to or detract from one's salvation. That is not what this is saying. It is not saying, if you are rich, you will be punished, and if you are not, you will be saved. That is not what this is saying at all. Again, one's economic status does not determine one's salvation. Jesus has already accomplished everything necessary for us to be saved, especially by offering himself as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep as we heard in today's second lesson, which Joey read for us just a few moments ago. His being the first fruits, um, his being the first fruits is, what is, made his, is what made his sacrifice holy. The first fruits were the fruits which, which, were, be, which were to be offered to God, um, especially in thanksgiving for, for blessings which he had given to a person. As we celebrate this time of year, during this season of Thanksgiving, we offer our own thanks and praise to God for everything he has done for us. And the first fruits were meant to be, were meant to be offered in thanksgiving to God for his blessings. The first fruits were what made the sacrifice holy. Jesus, by offering himself as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, makes his 
sacrifice holy, and therefore accomplishes everything necessary for us to be saved, which means you can be rich and still be saved. You can be poor and still be saved. Jesus' sacrifice has made us all equal because we are all saved the same way, by him alone. We are all saved by his death and resurrection alone. We contribute nothing to our being saved. Jesus has already accomplished everything necessary for us to be saved. And since he has accomplished everything, this means we are all made equal members of his kingdom. And one thing to emphasize about Jesus' kingdom is that everybody is equal. Everybody is equally the same. Everybody is equally saved. Everybody is equally accepted. Everybody is looked on the same by God. This also means in Jesus' kingdom, there is no hierarchy because all members of his kingdom receive the same grace, the same forgiveness of sins, the same salvation, the same Holy Spirit. There is only one head of the church, and that is Jesus himself. No other authority is needed than Jesus. Since Jesus' kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, rather than an earthly institution, there is no other head needed than Jesus himself. Jesus alone reigns over the church, which is his kingdom on earth. We are his kingdom, right here, right now. We are his kingdom, and his kingdom is here among us. Jesus' reign is not only limited to the church, however, but it also extends over the whole world. Jesus reigns supreme over all the earth, over all the entire world. He does this, as 1 Corinthians says, that God may be all in all. Either Jesus is everywhere or he is nowhere. Either Jesus is in everyone or he is in no one. Either Jesus is in all or he is nowhere. But the truth is that Jesus is in all. Jesus is in each and every person. Jesus lives, whether or not everyone realizes it, in every single person. All creation, all people, are to be treated as Jesus, to be treated with the same honor as Jesus, because he is in every single person. Therefore, all people are to treat each other as equals, because that is how Jesus treats all of us. God, speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, says that he will shepherd his flock with justice. This means that everyone has an equal place in God's flock. No one is to be, to be regarded as an outcast. Again, God promises through Ezekiel that, his, that, that he will rescue his sheep from all the places where they were scattered, from all the places where they were scattered as outcasts. Now in God's kingdom, there are no outcasts. All are welcomed, all are included, all are interconnected. In God's kingdom, not only is everybody equal, but everyone is interdependent on each other, and everyone is interconnected. Baptism is what has made us equal, has made us all part of one family, as we have been united to Jesus' death and resurrection. Baptism is also what makes us interdependent and interconnected with each other. Since we are all members of God's kingdom, where Jesus alone reigns supreme, 
since we are all members of God's kingdom, where he alone is the head of the kingdom, we, this means that as members of his kingdom, as members of his family, we are all connected with each other. What happens to one of us affects all of us. Jesus is in both those we regard as the least as well as the greatest. In his kingdom, we are all reliant on each other because we are all connected with each other. We therefore ought to be able to rely on each other for help in any kind of need. To help each other in need is to honor Jesus who lives in each of us and in each person equally. Jesus is honored whenever we live our faith in him outwardly rather than just inwardly. Rather than being simply a matter of Jesus and me, the Christian life is meant to be lived, is meant to be lived outward towards all because Jesus is in all. However we help another person, whether a family member, friend, neighbor, or even total stranger, is helping Jesus because it is helping him accomplish the purpose of his kingdom. The purpose of Jesus' kingdom is to make sure everyone is equally provided for, has what they need, and experiences his unconditional love acceptance, and help. Jesus' kingdom is unconditional. Jesus' love is unconditional. In Jesus' kingdom, everybody is equal. Everybody is the same. Everybody is treated the same unconditionally. And therefore, we ought to treat each other the same unconditionally. This does not guarantee salvation. Rather, it is a response to being saved by Jesus already by honoring him through honoring others. It is treating others with the same dignity as we would give to Jesus. It is treating others with the dignity due to all people because of Jesus reigning over all people. The question we ought to ask is not, are you a good person? Are you being a good, a, a good enough person? But how are you living as a member of Jesus' kingdom? How are you honoring Jesus in response to Jesus living in you and living in everyone else? How are you honoring Jesus according to being part of his kingdom? I leave this quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer for us all to ponder. He comes in the form of the beggar, of the dissolute human child in ragged clothes asking for help. He confronts you in every person that you meet. As long as there are people, Christ will walk the earth as your neighbor. Jesus and his kingdom are right here among us right now. We are part of his kingdom in the here and now. And the question is, how are we going to live out our faith in Jesus outwardly and honor him? How are we going to honor Jesus among us who walks the earth as our neighbor? And in so doing, how are we going to honor Jesus himself. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now let us stand. And together let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please feel free to place your offering in either one of the plates at the back of the sanctuary. We wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. Longing for Christ's kingdom to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry and the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries in our community, especially camp, sunshine in a bag, Adam's hope, the clothes closet, and many others, through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Lord, in your mercy, bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Lord, in your mercy, bring healing to all those in need of restoration in mind, body, or spirit, especially Betty's younger brother, Deborah Coyle, and all those who are known to us who we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
peace, serve the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> 